Hey everyone, I'm Rachel, and today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about something a little different. We're not going to be talking about the global flood right now because on Instagram, one of the Crack Your Bible viewers wrote me a message, and you know, if you guys are going through stuff, that is more important to talk about than some of the apologetics. We can get to that later, but if you ever have questions or something's on your mind, reach out to me and we can just talk about it. She had some questions because she said some of her family members who grew up in church, who grew up around Christians, have decided that maybe they're atheists or maybe they believe in a creator, but they're not really sure if they believe in Christianity anymore because they've gone through some very negative, hard times, and it's the question Christians always get, you know, why do bad things happen to us if there's a God who supposedly loves us? And she wanted to know what you can do to kind of bring these people back into the fold of Christianity. So the first thing that I would do if I had a family member who has decided that they've turned their back on God is I would pray for them. You need to be an intercessor for them and ask God to soften that, their hearts so that they're open to the gospel because you're never going to be able to browbeat the gospel into anybody. Paul talks about wives, if you have unbelieving husbands, that you win them over, not by your words, but by your deeds and your spirit and your actions, that fruit that all Christians are supposed to bear that shows that, hey, we are children of God. Because, sorry, you you just can't argue somebody into believing God. The thing is, is that nobody seeks God. Nobody. God goes out and he is the one that knocks on the door of people's heart. He is the one who touches them and says, you know, come, come to me. But people have to be receptive because in the end, the ball is in your court. God knocks when you're not looking for him, but you have to be the one that opens the door and say, yeah, sure, I'm, I am open to hearing the word of God. Never feel responsible for somebody else's salvation because one plants, another waters, but in the end, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to touch people and whoever is in your life, it's really up to them to decide whether or not they want to be receptive to God. I see a lot of churches, they want to teach all this positive, live your best life stuff, but that's not really reality because we live in a fallen world. Bad things are going to happen to us, and that doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It means that we live in a fallen world, and we can either choose to roll over and die, like Job's wife suggested, oh, just curse God and die, or you can still praise God through this storm and see how God will use you to bring about a breakthrough for other people. And you see this time and time and time again throughout the Bible. You see it throughout the Bible. God never says that he's going to get us out of problems, but he always is going to be right there with us going through the problems. And God knows what you're going through. He cares about us. And he wants you to be able to come to him with your problems, with your cares. And I don't want people to think that, oh, if bad things happen to me, if I'm not living a great life, it's because God doesn't care about me. Because that's not true. We can't be naive when we walk into situations. We need to put on the full armor of God. And we need to be intercessors for other people. We need to discuss our beliefs with other people. We need to discuss both positive and negative stories because life isn't all positive. People go through a lot of heartbreaking things and we need to be honest. Do you live a life where somebody says, you know what, I see God moving in their life and I want that for me. I want that relationship with God too that, that you have. So you need to make sure that you're a good witness and we're also told that we always need to be ready to give an answer for why we have a hope in Jesus Christ. And that goes back to studying the word and spending time with God so that you can understand why you believe what you believe. Because atheists have some fantastic PR where they have 
without merit, <laughs> they have decided that they have become the intellectuals and everybody else is stupid. And if you're an atheist, you're automatically uh, in the upper echelons and you're an academic and you're so smart, even if, I mean, you've never even been to school, even if you're illiterate, you're <laughs> say you're an atheist and they're like, oh, yes, he knows exactly what he's talking about. So Christians have a bad rap, and atheists have a fantastic rap on being the logical, reasonable ones. But Christians, the onus is on us to have an answer for why we believe what we believe. And this is exactly why I am so hard on churches in America. Because you can see my response on my Medium account, which I have linked below to Hillsong United's pastor, he he did this whole piece about, you know, how you need to preach the gospel and all the messages need to be positive and people need to walk away happy. But the thing is, is life is not necessarily happy. Life is not necessarily uplifting. And the entire Bible is not about God wants you to have a yacht. God wants you to have a big house. You need to plant that seed so that God will give you a sevenfold, hundredfold return so you can be making that cash. Like, that is not what the Bible is about. The Bible is about God seeking man to have a personal relationship with him. And throughout the Bible, you have stories of people who go through bad things. They have crises of faith. And God is still there with them. When people turn their back on God, God is always waiting there to come back to them and to save them. And honestly, we all go through bad things because we live in a fallen world. And it's not because God doesn't love you. It's because humanity has free will. And sometimes you experience bad financial things because of either other people or because you make bad, bad decisions. Or sometimes it's just a fluke accident. But again, everybody has free will and sometimes we're at the mercy of other people's free will. We deal with the consequences of other people's actions. In the Bible, God never promises that he's going to take away persecution or bad things, but he's promised that he will go through them with us. Now, if you guys are familiar with the story of Hananiah, Ananiah, and Mishael, better known by their Babylonian names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know that King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into a fiery furnace because they refused to bow down to his statue as God. They said, nope, we only worship God. We only worship Yahweh. We're not going to bow down at any cost. So he throws them into the fiery furnace. And when the soldiers look in, they say, I thought we only threw three guys in, but I see four. And that's because Jesus was right in the fire with them. When you're going through stuff, Jesus will be in that furnace with you. And a lot of times bad things happen to us so that God's glory can be magnified, so that we can do huge things through Jesus and we can do a lot of good for other people, even though we ourselves had to go through negative things. For example, Joseph himself was sold into slavery by his own brothers. He was falsely accused of rape, spent time in prison. But then, because he went through all of this stuff, he ended up the second in command of Egypt. And everybody in that part of the world was saved because a famine happened for seven years. And Joseph was able to prepare them for it by listening to God's voice. So if Joseph had never gone through those things, thousands, millions of people might have died during that seven-year famine. If you're familiar with the story of Queen Esther, Esther was an orphan. She was raised by a family member named Mordecai. And while pretty much nobody is familiar with how living under a monarchy was because our monarchies today are nothing compared to what they were like in the Bible. If the king says something, you do it. You don't have a choice. So when Artaxerxes says, all the virgins are coming to my palace and I'm going to pick one to replace Queen Vashti, Esther didn't have a choice. So she's orphaned. 
she's basically being married against her will to a foreign king. But if she hadn't gone through those things, maybe if her parents hadn't have died or whatever, maybe she would have been in a completely different situation, would have already been married off or something like that. But because Esther went through those things, it put her in a time and place where she was able to save all of the Jews that were in exile from annihilation because Haman was plotting to have all of the Jews put to death. But Esther was able to save them and expose Haman and he died and his family died instead. So we need to encourage Christians that, hey, guess what? People in the Bible, they went through the same things that you are going through, but God is always there for them. And when you're going through trials and tribulations, God is right there with you. For example, again, Bathsheba, she was minding her own business, doing her thing when King David saw her and decided, hey, I'm going to marry her. I, I want her. So what does he do? He, he calls Bathsheba in and she's forced to have sex with him because, again, you're not going to say no to the king. It was out of her control. But she was married and she was impregnated by David and David wanted to cuckold her husband into thinking, oh, this is actually my kid. So he calls Bathsheba's husband home from a war, but the husband's like, no, no, I, I can't see my wife if none of my men are going to be able to see their wives. So David has him murdered. And then if that's not bad enough, so Bathsheba has basically been raped. Her husband's been murdered. She's pregnant with King David's baby. And then once she has the baby, the baby dies. How terrible is that? Like, look at these terrible things that have happened, but God used it for good because who was her next baby? King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. And you see how God uses people's pain and the terrible things that happen to them to bring about good for the community. I feel that one of the reasons a lot of Christians may stray from the faith is that atheists can be very intimidating. A lot of them will be like, well, why don't you have an answer for this? Why don't you have an answer for this? Like, and it makes people doubt themselves. And the thing is, is you don't have to have all the answers. You just don't. I mean, we're all learning. We're all human beings and we don't have an answer for, you know, who created the universe? Well, if like, how couldn't God exist? Things like this. I mean, a lot of atheists will make you feel like you're an idiot because you can't explain quantum physics or particle physics. And they make these accusations like, oh, Christians are anti-science. But, you know, we wouldn't even have the sciences that we have today without Christians. Christians need to understand their history and their science and their background so that they can see that no, Christians aren't the ones who are anti-science. No, they're not ignorant. No, they're not stupid. And you don't have to have all of the answers right now for every single thing that people come up with. Well, how did all the animals get to the ark? What about this? What about this? What about this? And you have to understand that these people, they're just looking for an argument. They're not really here to have a discussion with you. They don't really care what you have to say. You could give them all the answers in the world, but some people are just hardened to the gospel. They're bitter against God, and they're not here for a fruitful discussion. It's just, you need to give an answer. You need to give an answer. You need to give an answer for things that are outside the realm of the Bible. So I think it intimidates a lot of people and then they feel unsure of themselves. But likewise, so many churches aren't teaching apologetics. They're not teaching why we can trust the Bible. And a book that I would suggest sharing is Cold Case Christianity, which was written by a former atheist who was a criminal investigator. And he shows step by step why you can trust the Bible. And... 
it's just something that I would definitely suggest you reading at least if you're not going to share it with somebody else not sponsored. How did God speak things into motion? You don't have to have an answer for these things to still have faith in God and I feel like a lot of people are intimidated or they're made to feel stupid and you, you, these people don't even have the answers, so you definitely don't have to feel like, oh, if I can't answer these questions, well, maybe Christianity is wrong. Where's all of this bad theology coming from? It's not coming from these storefront churches that have 12 members. It's coming from these giant mega churches that focus on uh, building your congregation so that you can get more money so that you can grow your small group so that you can bring in more people and bring in more money and the cycle just continues instead of discipleship about Jesus and it's it's leading people away from the church it's leading people away from the gospel because if you want to just talk about all of this fluffy idealized like live your best life God wants you to be happy when things aren't so happy, people are going to be like, oh, this isn't for me. Or when they hear one reasonable sounding argument from somebody who's not a Christian as to why Christianity is ridiculous or why it can't be trusted because they don't have that foundation, they stray. They're like, oh, okay, that sounds good. And when they've been going through bad things or they've been having a hard time, you know, the devil walks around like a roaring lion looking for people to devour. So he's putting those things in your mind, just like he did with Eve. Oh, you know what? God's trying to put you down. He doesn't want you to be like God. That's why he's trying to keep this secret knowledge away from you. And that's something that the Gnostics push a lot. But it's not true. It's just a lie of the devil. That's why you have to put on the full armor of God. And it starts with reading scripture, spending time in prayer with God. So if you have a family member who is straying, the best thing that you can do is just pray for them. Pray for guidance. Ask God to give you the words that you need to say to these people. And some might come around, some might won't but at least you've put the information out there where they have no excuse they get to choose and we can only hope that they are going to be like the prodigal son where they had it good they go out they mess up whatever but you know what god is a good father he's a loving father and he's still waiting with open arms to welcome us back when we have kind of screwed up our own life so we can only pray that they are going to have a realization that, hey, you know what? God is out there and he does love me and he's only making me a stronger person by dealing with these trials. Because God does put trials in our life so that we can become more relatable to the people that we want to witness to. What kind of witness are you if you've never experienced anything bad when you're trying to go out to witness to other people? How relatable is it if you've never experienced any sort of heartache or pain and you're dealing with people who have? Sometimes bad things happen so that we don't become prideful when God gives us a word of knowledge. I mean, that's what happened to Paul. He said a messenger of Satan was sent to him and he asked three times for God to remove a thorn in his side and God didn't. It was put there so that he wouldn't become prideful because of all of the crazy, amazing revelations that he was getting. So it just, it, it grounds you. So you have to realize that not all bad things that happen are because God isn't there. There's usually a reason to them, whether it is because we live in a fallen world, because we've made bad choices and we're just dealing with the natural consequences of them, or sometimes they're being used for the greater good so that God can show his mercy and his awesomeness in your life. And sometimes you just need to fall back and understand that God has your back. It's going to be okay. And if you've been through it, God understands. He is right there in the fire with you. Now in the description box below, I will put some resources and links to some articles about what to do when you're family has decided that they're going to go their own way, but I just want to encourage you that 
God will give you the words that you need if you want to minister to people in your family or if you want to pray and you don't know what to pray. Just ask God for wisdom and ask him like, God, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask for, but please show me what is going on in this person's life so that I can speak to them, so that I can comfort them, so that I can be a good witness for you. So anyway, I will talk to you guys on Monday and I'll see you later. Bye.